I'm telling you, that was Michael Jackson on the hook right there. Who who produced that? Quincy Jones? I don't know. You don't know? Man, I forget what the guy's name was. Rockwell. Rockwell. I think Rockwell. Yo, produced. that was Rock- Rockwell producing. How the fuck Rockwell get Michael Jackson singing background on that fucking song? His uncle's Barry Gordy. Oh, his uncle's Barry Gordy. That's what I'm saying. That's how he did it. Oh, Rockwell's nephew. That was Thriller Michael Jackson, too. Thriller Michael Jackson. So that means Michael Jackson... That's Shaheem Reed, the voice of God you're hearing right now. Uh, journalist extraordinaire. Um, Trey in the background, kissing the baby. You know? Rockwell produced it. G-Smith was like, yo, Rockwell produced it. But that's crazy. Michael Jackson Thriller. To have him featured on a record. Was Michael ever featured on anything else other than like... Uh, we with the with world. the joint with We Are the World or what's the shit with Paul McCartney? Say say say. That was his joint though. That was his joint. Mm-hmm. I don't think nobody else caught the Michael. What was that like? The man told them, "Yo, go in the booth for me, MJ." MJ had to know him his whole life or something, right? Probably, yeah. Wow, that's one of them real. I love you, shit. Barry wow. Gordon. Nah, it ain't even about Barry Gordy is what I'm trying to tell you. It's MJ like Rockwell. Whoever, he probably, because it's Barry Gordy and that's his nephew, he's seen that kid grow his whole life. That's like if your daughter sings one day and then she's like, your Uncle Joe, can you bust eight bars for me? I can't front. I got to go in there and bust the eight bars. You see what I'm saying? That's the only reason Michael Jackson's on that song. Yeah, they were the same age, too. the only reason why Michael Jackson's on that song. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to ask for that, too. Go and say, Yo, my man, it's called know. Rockwell. They said they gave me everything. These people know everything. Curtis Anthony Nolan produced it together. I mean, you know, we want to know what kind of. Shout out to my brother OG Juan. He was hanging out with Uzi Vert. Uh, he showed me he bought John Gotti's wine collection. He was busting out wines from the seventies and the eighties, and that's fly shit. That's big money shit. When you turn around, you be like, oh, they auctioning off John Gotti's wine collection? And he went and bought the wine collection. Amazing shit, guys. Amazing shit. And so, shout out to OG Juan for doing that. Tonight, we have a dear friend, a friend of mine for many, many years. He's going for mayor of New York City. You know, I've already endorsed Isaac Wright Jr. I believe in Isaac Wright Jr. But this man who will come tonight and talk his shit, my Dominican brother, none other than Fernando Mateo, a beautiful guy. I know him over 20-something years, a great, 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 great guy. And um, we hear his piece. He's always defending the Latino community, the, the, the guys who own the bodegas. The guys who drive the cabs, if they get robbed, he's always there for them. And so this show, yesterday we had Kodak Black with David Cohen. Uh, we had LJ with him. And, and let me tell you, huh? Lamar Jackson. Lamar, J- L- Lamar, let me tell you something. When Lamar first came on, I didn't know who the fuck he was. When he came on, I was like, yo, I didn't know that was him. And they and, and the shit was dim. And then when I seen him, I was like, Jesus Christ. That was a whole nother interview. I want to I, I wanna interview LJ. I had no clue. And when he came up, the shit was so fuzzy. I wish I could get that back. Threw up some sneakers today just, just to remind y'all I am a sniper. Do up some sneakers Sniper today. Gang. Huh? Sniper gang. Sniper gang. Shout out. Shout out Sniper Gang Records. But let it be clear, I threw up some sneakers to let y'all know I am a sniper. Now I will tell the sneaker world, I love y'all. All sneaker collectors, I love y'all. I'm going to be honest with you. If someone goes against me in sneakers... I will pull out Travis Scott's that's never been seen before in different colors. I will get so disrespectful 
that y'all gonna wish I've never did nothing like this. I'm being honest with you guys. Don't go and act like I didn't give you some one. It ain't a game. Be clear. I am not for play. I am not for play. Rashid Belhasid, Dubai, is in the building. Um, I think uh, Zion, Zion's playing tonight. And so, do have some joints out there. If you're not lying to yourself or delusional, you should know to stay in your place. Stay in your place. If you're not delusional. Soraka, much finer vodka. Peach Rock is always best. Uh, let me see if I got my guests on right now. Now, every day we bring you something different, you know? Trauma Man is on Memphis, right? Yeah, yeah it's the battle. You see, this nigga be balling his brand name. He be balling, but he's sleeping, too. He's the new uh, Kevin Durant. If he pushed hard enough... Brandon Ingram would be, uh, man, what you doing with that lifestyle in the back? <laughs> man, my lifestyle is violence, man. Putting the finishing touch in on the book of Joe. That's going to be my book I'm putting out. Shout out to the almighty Rock Nation in the check-in. Trying to find my brother. Memphis is on it. Memphis against New Orleans. What a great matchup. Somebody you got to really watch is that LaMelo Ball and my man from Duke. They got some years coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, no. They they got some years. Yeah, in Charlotte. But, but, but you know the center from? Yeah, MJ, fin MJ finally got a team, bro. Shout out to AJ, the visionary. I posted a picture earlier where I thought I looked cute. Uh, my brother took it. He's the photographer. Shout out to AJ. And so, uh, it is what it is, man. Hold on. Let me see, my brother. Cousin Miriam, what's up? Happy birthday. I posted you up. We party. I sung that song to you. Uh, we really rock. I'm waiting for my man, Mateo. Fernando Mateo, he ain't picking up the request. I don't think he knows how to do this thing. And so that's what happens with the OG. They don't really know how to work this thing. You know, I learned the hard way. Shout out to executive producer, Azariah Milan Cartagena. Co-executive producer is in the building, Dre of Cool and Dre. How's that Sunshine feeling out there, Joe Crack? Sunshine Top 20, Rhythmic Top 20, Urban next week. Uh, it's going stronger. Thing in Europe right now is like yeah, the fire. UK, that shit is like number one in the UK. Yeah, listen, throw, um, your, throw, your, throw your London flags up in the sky right now. On the throw your UK yeah. flags, your London yeah. Flag your Brexit, throw your Brexit yeah, flags throw up. up, throw the motherfucker the fastest uh, strain. What's the strain? The, uh, the most contagious strain. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sunshine, like that strain, boy. That motherfucker contagious out there in that UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it. The biggest, record right now, yeah. biggest record in the game right now. And, and what you want me to do, man? I'm just honored that we bless it, bless the people, and give them that good music. Oh, shit, you rocking like that, huh? DJ Smitty. Yeah, yeah, yo, the UK in here, man. The flags is up, man. I'm trying to show you, man. You got to cater to your audience. Joe Crack, they love it. Nah, I cater to my audience, man. And so... We're going to go hit Novico next time. This COVID... Damn, man, Novico. Why are you flexing on here, Jay? Like you're an international traveler. <laughs> are you trying to let us know you're a fucking international traveler? Catch me at the Groves in the suites. Oh, the Groves in the Man, you catch, you catch me in uh, Brixton. I like that. I'm in Brixton, you know. Yeah, I like 
like, when I'm out there, you know? I'm going to touch the people. I'm going to touch the people in Brixton, you know? You know? Me in Brixton, you know? Put that shit up, because we ain't do that yet. We did the... Come on. Loud, sweetie. We got to... Bring that shit back. Come on. AJ, pass me that shit right over there. Yeah. Luther Vandross, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Luther Vandross, my favorite ever. My favorite ever. I feel like it's a dream come true to rap over the Luther beat. Um, you don't know how many plane flights I felt like it was about to crash. And in my headphones, all I had was Luther getting me through. Um, Luther Vandross, when you see me wear the watches with all the diamonds and shit like that, it's because of Luther Vandross. When Luther used to perform, I would be all the way up a deck with a three-piece suit on. And he'd be in the show singing, and he'd be wearing this watch all iced out. And the fucking, the, the lighter hit it, and I'd be watching it like, damn. When I get money, I'm going to do it like Luther. And so uh, Luther Vandross inspired me so much. I tell his story if you never heard it. I remember when he was dying, he was in Beth Israel Hospital. I never knew him and I was nervous. So I pulled up across the street. I was with my wife and I was scared to go in the hospital because I didn't want to get dissed or, or somebody tell me I couldn't go. But uh, rest in peace, Luther, uh, the state, you know, they don't clear much. They cleared it for us. Of course, Rihanna, she don't clear much. She cleared it for us. Uh, I think it's just good to be have good energy around. And when you got good energy out there, you got people who really love you. You know, you can make some pretty impossible shit uh, happen. And so uh, that is, you know, that is a big thing. You know what I'm saying? And so... Uh, Rest in peace, Luke the Vangels, you know? And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he reached reached a billion. That's how much they worth. Congratulations. Who? Cool. Rihanna? Her, Her company, company just hit a billion? billion. They worth a billion. Mm. Yo, Tony, I'm doing this show. I couldn't hear the record yet. 
as soon as I finish, I'll get to work. I'll listen to the uh to the record. Proud of my brother Tone Sunshine. He's been playing me some really, really hot music. He's been in the studio with Cool and Dre. Uh his shit is fire. Uh we got some things for that ass and and there's a true definition of I want to see my brother win. And I often say that my biggest failure throughout being a mogul, being an executive in the music business, is not being able to really fully blow up Tone Sunshine like like I wanted to. And he was ahead of his time, man. And so, you know, my brother, you know what I'm saying? We here for him one million percent. So it is what it is. Let me see if my man. Oh, he's there. Yeah, I don't like that beat. I'm just fucking with Jay. <laughs> oh, you love this beat? Don't do that. I, we had a record on this record on the, on this album called Rock the Body. I love that one. Yo, Fernando Mateo. Hey, Joe. The oh. one and only Fernando Mateo. Uh, Fernando Mateo, I know you for over 20 years. You're beyond a beautiful person. More than that, you're a fighter for the people. You're a crusader. And you're always fighting for the little guy. And even though uh, you're well off and you got some money and you're an entrepreneur and you got businesses, you're always the guy on the front line getting ready for if anything happens to a bodega owner, he gets robbed, or a taxi cab gets robbed or hurt. You've been out there, but I mean consistently for years and years and years and years. And I've always respected you for that. Welcome to the Big Big Show, my brother, Fernando Mateo. Thank you, Joe. It's an honor to be on your show. I've been wanting to be on your show for a long time. It's an honor, my brother. I'm so proud of you, so, part, so proud of your accomplishments, coming where you come from and being where you're at and all you do for our community just as well, man. I see you handing out turkeys. I see you handing out Christmas presents. I see you in our community day in and day out. And I don't forget that. You're one of the few that always is always around helping your people, man. And I, and I love you for that too, Joe. Thank you, Fernando. Fernando, where you grew up at, uh, and just to get the people a sense, because we got a lot of people watching on it. Where you grew, grew I, up I, at? I grew up, I grew up in the Lower East Side. I grew up in the tenement buildings in the Lower East Side, and I grew up in the projects, on, in the Baruch projects down in the Lower East Side. That's where, that's where I come that's from, man. That's where project. I live. Father and father, where they from? Santo Domingo or... My, my parents are Dominican, yes. My you, parents came here in 1950. Wow. Fernando, you know, I'll tell you a story where I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up, my neighborhood was 99% black. And I had blonde hair and green eyes. And my moms would go to the bodega and there was a man there, he owned the bodega. And he would ask my mother all the time, what is this kid doing here? Like, why you got this blonde haired green eyed kid over here? This is that. He eventually became my godfather, he's Dominican. His name was wow. Jose Reynosa. I recently found out he passed away like 15 years ago in Santo Domingo. He went over there and I never heard from him again. I tried to find him, I tried everything I couldn't, but his granddaughter recently told me that he passed away. He was a great, great man. And so that's why Fat Joe being Puerto Rican and Cuban, I've always embraced the Dominican community because a man who really showed me how to be a man was a Dominican man, and he owned the bodega. And so that's why I've always had love for the Dominican community my whole life. Joe, I'll tell you, you're not Puerto Rican and Cuban. You are, you are Latin American, brother. You come, you know, you've left your heart in every Latin American country. Dominicans is just one of the many, one of the many countries that loves you. Your music, you, as a human being, bro, you don't turn your back on no, on nobody, on no Latino. 
You're always in the forefront, and we know it. I see it all the time. And I appreciate you because of that. You know, I'm taking a big step right now, Joe, because our city needs to get fixed. I'm running for mayor, and I'm running for mayor for one reason only, to get our city back, to get our kids 14, 15, 16. Joe, I dropped out of school when I was 14. I don't want kids to drop out of school. I was fortunate like you. You found a godfather. I found a Jewish godfather, a, a family that adopted me and that taught me what, what was right and what was wrong. They gave me a job. So after school, until I dropped out, I'd go to work every day and I fell in love with working. And I went to vocational school and I learned how to lay floors. And at 17, I married a Boricua. At 17, I started my own business. Remember, when I grew up here, there were no Dominicans. My family were Puerto Ricans and Blacks. Those were my family. And Puerto Ricans always opened their arms, always opened their doors, always gave us that hospitality that we needed in a foreign country. You know, so I've been working really hard, Joe, since the age of 14 years old. And I never went back to school. But I do know one thing. I love New York. New York, I breathe the oxygen. I love the people. I love, like you said, my cab drivers, my bodega owners, my small businesses, my restaurant owners. They're all going out of business, Joe. They're all, they're all losing their livelihood because this city needs a change. It needs a turn, a twist. And I'm going to bring it. A friend of mine came to see me last night. And from New York, pristine jewelers, my brother, Avi. And he said, Joe, because, you know, I haven't been in New York in a long time. You know, I live in Miami. And during the COVID, I haven't traveled. I'm going up there next week. But he told me, Joe, if you take your car from the 20th Street and 5th Avenue and you drive all the way up towards Harlem, I guarantee you, you'll cry looking at the businesses and how many businesses shut down. Um, and tell me about that, man. What, what's the plan for rebuilding the businesses out there? You know, the first thing you need to do is cut the heads off of every city agency. New York, it wasn't the pandemic that put all these businesses out of business. The pandemic just added to it. It's the, all these city agencies from the health department to the, to the consumer affairs, to the department of buildings, to... The NYPD, I mean, all of these agencies make it impossible for you to stay in business. They abuse their power and they go in there to shut you down for anything. I know it because I lost La Marina to the city agencies. I will not allow what happened to me to happen to any small business of, of man out there. When you open up a business, Joe, you know, you've got a few businesses in New York. You know what it takes. You borrow money, you invest your life savings, investing in your business, and then the Department of Building comes and says, oh, you need sprinklers. You got to shut down until you put them up. You know, that's what the city agencies do. New York City right now, what I would do is give tax breaks to those that come back. I'll give tax breaks to those that come and invest. And I will make sure that every city agency Kisses the ground that every small businesses, that every small business man and woman, uh, uh, wherever they step. Why? Because we're the ones creating jobs. We will create enough jobs for 14 years. You know, there, you know, Joe, you know how many 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds are out in the street doing the wrong thing because they can't get a job? I would give, encourage every small business. I give them tax breaks. If you hire a kid from your neighborhood to work in your bodega, to work in your restaurant, to work in your office, to work in your hardware store, I will give you tax breaks if you can adopt a kid and keep that kid from going out in the streets and doing the wrong thing. Last summer, because for the first time, because of COVID, was the first time kids didn't have summer youth program. So we hired some at youth, uh, at, at risk youth. Um, my girl Erica Ford said, Joe, you got to hire them. I brought them to my store. They were the best workers in the world. That's and right. My opportunity changed their life. I mean, I yeah. know exactly what you're talking about. Um, 
But the, it doesn't have to be in the summertime, Joe. You know that a lot of kids are, a lot of kids have one parent, a mother that's out there working while that kid's going to school. When that kid comes out of school and his mother isn't home, what do you think he goes? He goes to hang out. He goes to hang out with the wrong people. If he had a job to go to, that kid would have a different career, a different life, a different example. Like you had it, like I had it. You know, and that's what I would do in New York City. Tough time growing up and I'm and I'm finishing up the my first book about my life. I wrote a book. And and the way and I was really, really bad at one point, right, Fernando, but the way I started out was different. I was in, I was in elementary. I was winning every award. You know, it, it, you know, it, you know, when you go for the award show, it was me battling a, a, a young lady. She would always beat me. She was smarter than me. And because of my behavior, she would win 10 awards. I win eight. Her name was Candy Stallings. But I was in IGC intellectual gifted child uh, classes and I kept winning awards to meet the borough president. And I said, damn, man, I thought about it today. I said, man, had I grew up in the suburbs or in a better place, maybe I would have been smart um, scholastically in school and been like a lawyer or something like that. But it was just our surroundings were so hard. So I know what you mean about having mentors and people to look up to and people to give you an opportunity. That's important. Um, what else you got as far as safety and relationships with the police? Because a lot of people have uh, lost trust in the police, man, with, with, with everything that's going on with the racial tension. You, you know as well as I do, Joe, that 99% of the cops are good cops. You're always going to find bad cops. You're going to find bad people everywhere. What I would do is I wouldn't start at the academy. I would cut the head off of the top. Because you get good cops coming out of the academy and then they get poisoned by a system that needs to change. I would make sure that the people up on top look like us. I would make sure that the people up on top know what you and I went through growing up. And I would make sure that we have enough cops patrolling our streets, taking care of your parents, my parents, our community, and our city housing. Right now, defund the police is not the way to go. I would not defund the police. I would have the police engage with the community, get to know them, have cops on the beat. You know how many bodega owners fear people going in there and robbing them and walking out and they can't do nothing? They call the cops. The cops say, I can't do anything because they're going to be out on the street in an hour. You know, you get all the people that are being shot being killed, they're all brothers and sisters. You know, guess what? Guess who we call when we have a problem? We call the cops mm -hmm. so that they can help us, assist us. But of course, you're going to get some bad cops. I was a victim of bad cops. I was a victim of police brutality. When my marina was taken away, it was bad cops that set me up. That Hold did up. things. Okay, Fernando, let me explain. Fernando Mateo took an area of New York City that we all love, Washington Heights, Dykeman Avenue, Dykeman Street, and created the, the, the most beautiful, the best uh, restaurant slash club. It's called Marina. People from all across the country, not, not New York, across the country flew in every week to come to Marina because it was the flyest shit in the country. Right? And so the police actually squeezed you out of there by messing with all the customers, messing with, like, like give a breakdown of well, what happened. What happens was that the area, which was predominantly Dominican, started gentrifying. A lot of white people started moving in, and they were very smart. They didn't like when Fat Joe and Rick Ross and Jay-Z and all these celebrities went to La Marina. They didn't like when people of color got together for fun. La Marina was a very safe place, always was a safe place. Never right. had a problem there. Ever. But these gentrifiers started calling 311, 311. The cops started shutting down all the clubs uptown. 
So I held the meeting at the SLA and I called out the police inspector. And I said, you are abusing your power. You are shutting down all these businesses that are, that are up here develop, developing that are owned by minority people. And you know what the guy did? He said, all right, you want to defend them? Watch what's going to happen to you now. So what they did was they set us up. They gave us 79 tickets for fire extinguishers, for hookahs, for extension cords. They did it building up a huge case against us. We beat them all in court, Joe. We beat everything in court. But the SLA said that we had a problem. There was one guy out of 300 employees that we had, one guy selling drugs. We knew nothing about it. Yeah, I never he, heard we were that. shocked. We were shocked. Yeah, I was, and I they was, said, they I, said that after six and a half years, we were irresponsible operators. And my six million dollars, six million dollars that I invested there, Joe, I lost it overnight. I will never forgive this mayor. I will never forget what this when, mayor when, did to me. Ain't sending you one guy out of 300 workers, which I've never heard of Marty not selling drugs in my life. Never. Uh, sounds to me when I watch all these conspiracy movies like The Black Judas and this and Malcolm X and this, it sounds to me like yeah, this guy was, uh, you know, he was in on it. Like, you know what I mean? Shut down the Marina. Oh, yes. So, it, it happened at the top. Huh? Joe, this didn't come from, from cops on the beat. This came from the top. It came from the mayor. It came from the police commissioner. It came from the chief of the department ordering the commanding office of the 3-4, a Dominican, a Dominican, bro, a Dominican did this to me. You know what? When I am mayor of this city, I will make sure that we turn the lights back on. I will make sure that kids have an opportunity to work. I will bring small businesses back. I will have a safe city because I'll have more cops out there, well-trained, doing what they have to do because the cops are good people. But you have a few bad ones and we'll get rid of them. Fernando, a lot of, some of them are really bad. And, and so what, what I'm saying to you is, uh, what do you say to people who say, take out the, the, the slogan, defund the police, but say, there's a domestic violence or somebody ain't take his medicine and he's bipolar or so. What do you say about them saying community outreach rather than a guy showing up with a, with, 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 with a gun and, and a police uniform? You need to have an emergency crisis unit, an emergency crisis unit that is unarmed within the police department that can go and de- them. We have it for hostage situations. We have it for all kinds of situations. We should have it for the mentally disabled, for the mentally unstable. Why? Because they're not bad people. They're just sick and they make mistakes and they get killed for making those mistakes. But you know what? It's lack of training. We need to train our cops, make sure that they know what they're doing and have special units that you can deploy for situations like this. But the first thing we need to do is make our city safe because without having a safe city, we're not gonna have businesses coming back. You don't wanna come back to New York if New York isn't safe, Joe, because you can lose your life in a minute. You're a public figure. People love you, people will hate you. You know what? Something will happen to you if we don't get our city under grabs. That's why I'm running for mayor, not because I want to, but because I have to. I, I need to do it for my people and for my city. Fernando Mateo, you went from Marina. This is why I love you so much, man. I don't know if I've told you this in your face, but you went from creating the Marina. You got squeezed out. Then you went right over to the Bronx, and you come and you make Zona de Cuba over the bank on 149th and Grand Concourse. You're not scared. You're, you're, no. You're, a true entrepreneur, whether you win or lose, you'll take the chance if you believe in that vision. Tell me about why the move to the Bronx and your restaurant is incredible in the Bronx, Zona de Cuba. Joe, you know what? I You can't knock me out. 
You can't knock me out. You can knock me down. But you know what? I trained for this. Everyone said to me, you will never be able to open up in a federal building. It's impossible. And I said, you know what? I like to do what is impossible. And I got the permits and the right. It took me three years with all the bureaucracy. But we built in the Bronx. I like to build for my people. I know my community. You got to bring good things to them. They deserve it. Downtown can take care of itself. I want to bring the best to my people. Because you know what? They work hard. They work harder than anybody. And it, they only have, they have the right to have the best in their community. And I will continue investing in my people because they never will let me down. Zona de Cuba, you can't even get a reservation at Zona de Cuba. That's how busy we are. You know why? Because we treat people well, we treat them with respect, and we give them what they deserve, Joe. And I'm dying for you to come back up. So whenever you come back to New York, you got to come to Zona de Cuba and have dinner with me. It's, it's social distancing. Uh, the rooftop is social distancing in the summertime. Spring, summertime, I'll be back up there. Um, but I've always admired that about you, that you, you're not afraid to take chances. Some people no. are scared. You're, not, you're a visionary. You're like uh, Lucky Luciano who made uh, Vegas. You would have went out there to the desert and said, yo, we making Vegas. Exactly. Right. You know... You know what, Joe? You live one time. If you don't take risk, you will be poor your whole life. Risk is what you take in order to succeed. The risk that I take is limited because I know that investing in my people, I can't lose. Look at your industry, Joe. Look at your industry. Who has made all these billionaires, Jay-Z and Beyonce and, and, and Rihanna, now I hear she's a billionaire. You know what? Who's made them who they are? It's our community. Right. It's our people. They're yeah. the ones that listen to our music. Johnny Pacheco died, man, and I want to tip my hat to his family and let our community know that we will miss the greatest salsa man in, in the world. Johnny Pacheco, rest in peace. But Joe, you invested your talent in our community. You made your money because of our people. So what, where do you go to give turkeys? Where do you go to give Christmas presents? Without you go to your people, to your community. You never forget. I'm never. the same way. I don't forget where I come from. And when I'm the mayor, I'm going to go to Zona de Cuba and I'm going to go to every spot in New York and I'm going to make sure nobody puts them out of business because it costs a lot to build a business. Why have a city agency shut you down for no reason? You know, there's a lot, a lot of, uh, my man Manny from Brick lost his restaurant out yes. there. Uh, I know he's supporting you, Manny from Brick. Yes, I, yes. You know, business owners, they feel you. And I've always feel, for, you know, I, you know, I've always, I, I've always loved that you stand up for the, for the little guy. Watch you for years before I even knew you. I'll watch you on the news defending the bodega guys because you got to realize Bodega's in the hood, in the middle of all the violence. And, they, you know, they can easily get robbed. The, get, the, the, the taxi driver, easily, they're in vulnerable positions. And they need somebody like you because a lot of times these people are the voiceless. And so they go and they go, yo, Fernando, we need you to, Bring out the blow, the, the 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 blow horn. What you call that shit when you when you the go? The bull horn. The bull horn. You need the megaphone out. Come out, and I watched you for years do that, and I've always loved that about you. Um, how can people find out more about your campaign? Where could they donate? What could they? Yo, do? you know, I'm the vehicle. If my people have faith in me, I promise them that they're gonna have a city they can feel proud of. You need to go to MateoTheMayor.com and chip in. It's not Mateo for mayor because I know I will be the mayor. And you will hear the biggest bullhorn you've ever heard when I, ha when I sit at City Hall. In fact, you're going to come visit me at City Hall and we're going to hang out. You know, listen, 
MateoTheMayor.com. I need donations. I need my people to donate $10, $20, $50, whatever they can donate. Because I can't run the car without gas. You know that. You've got a few Rolls Royces. If you don't <laughs> put gas on them, they sit in your driveway, right? You're right. <laughs> All right. I need gas in my tank in order to get to City Hall. So, Joe, if you can tweet out to your people and tag them, you know, um, Juan not, OG Perez, you know, he's helping me out. Uh, they heard you loud and clear, my brother. I love you, man. I thank you for everything. Just thank you for being a beautiful person. My friend, my brother, Fernando Mateo. The official you. mayor. God bless uh, you, Joe. Uh, Fernando Mateo, and you don't know who I know. And the man been fighting way before he thought about politics. He been fighting for the people. And I've watched him. Articulate. Smart brother. Got money. Got money. But still think about the less fortunate. Always out there in the streets for the people. We got some good people running for mayor right now. Shout out to Ruben Diaz Jr., uh, Bronx Borough President. Shout out to Isaac Wright Jr. I got to bring him on here. So after I endorsed Isaac, we never brought him on here so he could talk to y'all and let y'all know uh, what he's up to. But at least these are grassrooted people. Uh, I cannot be manipulated by money, nor Wall Street, nor any type of influence like that. If I don't see you on the streets, I will not support your movement. I can't. I can't and I will not. And I say, Ruben Diaz Jr. one time, he tells me, Joe, he comes to the Rucker. This is a true story. Yo, Ruben, don't get mad at me. Bronze Borough president. He says, Joe, everybody's looking for you. I need you to go meet with this guy. This guy was going for mayor. And I said, yo, Ruben, I really don't want to meet with the guy. He said, yo, do it for me. At the time, Ruben was a little guy. He was like a city councilman. He's always been my brother for 20-something plus years. I love Ruben. So I go down there. I meet with the guy. Ruben is right next to me. And so the guy is Latino, but he's talking white, you know. Oh, well, you know, uh, and pues, and this. You know, I've never seen this guy in the hood. And I sit down with him out of respect for Ruben. I said, listen, he talks. He said, what can I do to be mayor of New York City? I tell the guy, you can't do nothing. The people don't feel you. You ain't for the people. I came for Ruben. I will never endorse you, and the people won't feel you. I'm sorry, I can't do it. And you know, most of the time, you got to realize just because people tell you, yo, you can come to the, the Gracie Mansion, you can know a mayor, you have a friend with the mayor, you have. It's not what it's about for me. Nothing is more powerful than the power of the people. You ain't got the people. You ain't got nothing. Shout out my good friend, Fernando Mateo. Always, man, a beautiful guy, man. I mean, what a beautiful guy. And uh, thanks for being on here. Um, me, I will never run for mayor, nothing. Nothing. I'm not that guy, guys. You know, I, I have a real checkered past. You know, I'm not that guy. And uh, in fact, I don't even like to get involved with this shit. But this one is like really, really so important, man. We're losing businesses. You know, police relationships with the with the people is horrible. Um, the city's fucked up. Everybody I know is moving to Florida. Everybody I know is moving to Florida. They're moving out of New York. And so,
That's a problem. And so New York, we need to stay there and reinvest in our city. JJ Reddick is officially washed. No, you can say that. They say he got a great podcast, though. You ever seen this podcast or heard his podcast? No, nah, that's a fact? No, not yet. No, that's... They trying to do that? That's a great pickup. You know, AD, AD hurt. He been balling. Blake Griffin to the Lakers? That would be great. Yeah, Mutual AD interest. They need somebody I like that. Right what? AD hurt, man. They need somebody to come in. AD's there. hurt for two weeks. Y'all got to stop. <laughs> now he's hurt for two weeks. Don't do that. Yo, yo, this guy's so full of shit. Let me tell you something. Dre of Cool and Dre, if it ain't a Miami Heat uniform... So much, he probably sleeps in a onesie of a Miami Heat. Like, I've never seen a guy who manipulates the narrative to always be Miami Heat. Yo, Mayor, what's good? I know they took your slot, man. You, the mayor was talking about it. Mayor wanted politic beef. Yo, tell him I'm the mayor. Yo, Mayor's crazy. <laughs> Dope name. Uh, we out here, you know? Shout out to Chili. Look, everybody. Yeah, New York isn't done. I mean, it's going to come back. You know, you got to realize what's going down in, in New York City is a COVID hit New York City before anywhere else. Tons of people were dying. Uh, people, the, the, New York's been closed. This is why the, the owners here in Miami, I complained that it's open. Shout out to Kent Jones. But in New York City, they're complaining their business is not open and they can't earn money. But New York City is the greatest city on earth. Don't get that fucked up. It will come back. It's about who's going to come back. He said bu bureaucracy and, and the problem they give uh, to the to regulations, to the business owners. Um, he's like, you got to be small business owner friendly. Dade County Choppers, yo, what's up, Verse? My brother Verse, shout out to Tesso. And so, yo, listen, guys. The COVID, still real. And, you know, my favorite channel to watch, I go to sleep to CNN every night. And somebody told me something a month ago. They said that's uh, COVID TV. That all they want to talk about is COVID. I got to agree. And so, you know, the media and CNN sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, both media, every media plays towards a fear somehow. And so now they showed that for the first time in months, the spike is going down, maybe because people are being more careful. People are taking the vaccine. Then they bring my guy, Sanjay Jukta, on here to talk about how it might go back up. Like, yo, Jay, if the shit going down, let's try to roll with the light, the positivity. That let's keep it going. There. Why the fuck they got to tell us a doomsday scenario of how the shit going to come back? God damn, we've been waiting for the shit to go down. You can't even let us breathe. The UK strain, the Brazil strain, the South Africa strain. In there, like, but I'm just saying, yo, if it's finally going down, why before it's going down, we can't even throw a victory parade? They're already shooting the shit. Hey, it definitely's coming back. I'm telling you, bigger than ever. Like, what the fuck, bro? Jesus Christ. Fucking COVID TV. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I threw my LA shit on. You know what I'm saying? Feeling like that. Anyway, I'm about to go back to work on the soundtrack. Big, big show soundtrack slash the book. Uh, finishing touches on the book. 
very, very proud of this book. This book isn't just like how I met, you know, this DJ or rapper for the first time. It's really, really the story of my life from being a baby, from Bronx, Lebanon Hospital in Fulton to where I'm at now. And you'll see, man, and, and the whole thing is to show you my failures, my flaws, and my victories um, to inspire you and show you that you can go through so much stuff and you could go through so much stuff and still overcome and be sane. Because a lot of us, we give up at some point. You know, uh, somebody told me, uh, this guy, uh, somebody killed themselves the other day. Off, they made some new shit in New York by the by the mall in Manhattan. What's that shit? The, the bees mall. nest or some shit? What's the art? The, the, the stairs that people go up. What's Holy the mall God. they made on Thirty Fourth Street? Oh, that, that's the mall in Manhattan. Nah, it's the mall they made on Thirty Fourth Street by the West Side. Remember the indoor mall? Oh, okay, okay. Wait a but you know they made some shit where everybody's taking the picture. Yeah. Somebody I decided to die off there. Yeah. Yeah. They I wanted that to be, that. you know, oh, this is the new place to take pictures. Yeah. Let me go kill myself off this shit. A couple of people did that so far. Yeah. yeah the I mean, motherfuckers is crazy, man. They want to go out with a bang for real, huh? This shit is crazy. I, I don't understand people, man. Life is too good even if it's bad. The vessel. Life is too good even if it's bad. Trust in God to get you through it. Keep telling you. Belief is major. And believe in God whether the good times or the bad times. Shout out to my sister, Lauren Reidinger. Lauren, you had such a great Hudson Yards. Lauren, you had a great clubhouse yesterday. The empowerment of the women. And just everybody that was on there. It was Grant Cardone. It was Damien from FUBU. It was uh, Anthony Anderson, Alyssa. An amazing, amazing clubhouse. You need to do that often. I was impressed. Yo, B-Dot. What's up, my brother? I love you more, Lauren. Uh, my sister, uh, her husband, J.R. Ridinger, I keep telling you, he's my mentor. Uh, he's the guy who inspired me to be great. Um, taught me so much about life. Taught me how to love. Uh, shout out to MarketAmericaShop.com uh, where we give opportunity to young entrepreneurs. We even the playing field. Doesn't matter if you got a PhD or you ain't graduate high school. If you want to win and you want a system to make money, that's it for you. Let me see who's there. Hold on a second. Love you, Lauren. All right, y'all, the big, big show tomorrow. Uh, legendary guest is going to be SWV Coco. Thursday, I got Vivica Fox. I'm just trying to give you everything. Yesterday was Kodak Black. Friday was Lil Uzi. I'm giving you everything. Peace, y'all. It's the biggest in the game. He came king and he's